In this video, I'll show you the next steps to creating a cylinder on the wheel. So you've mastered centering. You're able to get a ball of clay nice and perfectly centered on the wheel head. Now you're ready to move on to the next step. In order to find the center of this ball of clay, we need to um, create a divot right in the middle. And the way that you do that is to rest your finger just off to the side of the center and then compress and slowly move your finger towards the center. You'll feel your finger fall into a little divot once it has reached the very center of this ball of clay. And you know if, you go, if you're going beyond the center because you can feel your finger start to rise up again. So just move it in towards the center. You'll feel it kind of settle into this little divot, allow the wheel to spin a little bit, and create a nice divot there and that's where you're going to apply pressure to open this up. So when we were centering we created a hamburger bun shape. We want to turn that hamburger bun into a donut so we're going to drill a hole down through the center. Once we've made that divot we know where we're, where we're going to do that. Um, as we drill down in we will be revealing clay that's drier and doesn't have as much moisture so we'll need to continually add water. I like to hold my sponge in my right hand and drill down with my left hand. If I find that I need more water, I can easily just squeeze the sponge and allow water to run down my hand. Um, otherwise, if you don't feel comfortable holding the sponge, as you're opening, you may need to stop and get some more water or reach over with your other hand and apply water as you're opening. So I'm going to work with my hands connected as one tool. My elbows are locked into my thighs. I'm going to use the longest finger on my left hand to drill down in, but I'm keeping my fingers together. So I'm not just holding one finger like this or like this, or just using my thumb by itself because that can wiggle around. So I'm going to hold my hands together as one tool, my fingers as one tool so they can be really stable. So I'm going to rest my finger in that divot I created and I'm going to start to compress downward and a lot of this is just moving your hand, your fingers like this, not necessarily pushing down. So think about compressing down in with your fingers. All right, so I'm going to begin, I'm going to compress down. The wheel is moving slower than it was when I was centering. I've got my elbows locked. I can squeeze the sponge a little bit and add some water as I go. I'm lifting up my forefinger and my pinky. So just my two middle fingers are compressing down. As I go down, I'm going to start to rest my thumb on the wheel head. That will help tell my fingers that are drilling the hole where the wheel head is. Now we don't want to go all the way down because our plan is to create a form that has a bottom and walls. And so I don't want to drill all the way down and create a hole in the middle of it. So I want to stop before I get there. So I'm going to compress down, add some water. Now when you get close and you think you might have gone far enough, you can check by using your needle tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the wheel. I'm going to push the needle tool down right in the center. And then I can put my finger down there and pull it up and I can see how thick that is. Now that is about the right thickness, about a quarter inch. If it was too thick, I could compress further. If it was too thin, I might just um, proceed on with this step knowing that this will be a practice cylinder. Um, if it becomes too thin, it's quite difficult to add clay and get it to um, stay there and create a successful pot in the end. Typically when you add clay, you might get cracks in the bottom once it dries. Okay. So you can see that I have a weird little lip right here 
and we want this to be nice and smooth on the top. So I'm going to compress the clay, which is something that we'll do throughout the process. I'm going to use my left hand like this, where I kind of support on the outside and on the inside, and then I'm going to use my sponge right next, right above my hand and compress downward. Get that hamburger bun shape back. So now that we've made a donut, we're ready to open the bottom. <clears throat> and again, I use my hands in pretty much the same position, my left hand on the inside, left two fingers on the inside, hand with sponge right above, elbows locked in. Now this is where I'm going to pull back towards myself and try to create a bottom. So we'll spin up a little bit faster, slowly pulling back towards myself, trying to maintain that thickness on the bottom. I'm going to relax my hands and slowly let go. I'm going to use my sponge to pull out all that water that's in there. We don't want to let any water sit in the bottom of the cylinder while we're <clears throat> throwing. That'll weaken the clay at the bottom. Now that I've opened this up, um, we are trying to throw cylinders that are about um, four to six inches wide at the bottom. And so I'm going to make sure that it's wide enough for me to make my cylinder. I can measure that. Um, we're going to use this rib with the right angle to compress the bottom and create the wall of the form. So to do this, you want to hold the rib in both hands like this. And I'm going to hold it at, a, at an angle like this. And so that's as the clay goes by, it can slide under it. Rather than if I held it straight up, when the clay goes by, it might dig into it. And I want to hold it at an angle so the clay can just glide by but get compressed down. And where I'm going to do this is if we look down and think about this as the uh, face of a clock, I want to hold this tool right at three o'clock. And so this right angle is at three o'clock on the clock face. And this part of the rib is right in the center. And I'm going to hold it at an angle so the clay can just slide by it. And hold it really tight with both hands. I'm going to compress down and maybe I need to move it back and forth just a little bit to get the whole floor there. But I'm always just working right here in between three o'clock and six o'clock. The wheel's spinning around, so you only need to work in between three o'clock and six o'clock, and the whole piece will come around to you. Don't think that you need to move around the pot because it will move to you. Just hold steady and hold in one place. Once you've compressed the interior, it should look like this. Nice and crisp in there, flat bottom. Now once you've compressed the bottom, we're going to pull up. And this is something that takes a lot of time to get the hang of. There's nuances within the pressure that you use, and it has a lot to do with how much pressure is on the inside and the outside. Another really important thing is that we need to be reacting to the clay. If the clay feels like it's too soft or too hard, that can tell us how much pressure we need to use. We need to be in communication with the clay, thinking about what's happening and what we might do to change what's happening to be create a successful pot. So just always remember that you need to be in tune with the clay and 
react to what's happening. There isn't a prescribed amount of pressure or a prescribed motion that will create a successful pot. It all depends on what state the clay is in and where you are in the process. So we have to be actively engaged and react to what's going on. So now to do our first pull, um, you can actually practice with just one hand uh, um, with your fingers on the inside and your thumb on the outside. Again, I'm working at three o'clock and in between three o'clock and six o'clock. And just have your thumb touch the wheel head and your fingers at the base on the inside and have some water ready and just compress, squeeze a little bit. And then once you feel that there's a groove created here, slowly move your hand up and towards the center. Just pinching and allowing that clay to move upward. Now once you get to the very top, or right before you get to the very top, you need to relax and let go. You might have seen my fingers just kind of went like that. If you don't relax and let go before you get to the top, you can end up clipping the top of that. So just practice that with one hand for a little while, pinching and slowly moving upward, and then relaxing and letting go before you get to the very top. That will give you the sense of what it is to pull clay on the wheel, where you compress, create a little divot, and then move the clay upward. Now once you've done your initial pull, we're going to use both hands to create the rest of the cylinder. I'm going to add some moisture to the rim, just squeezing my sponge and letting the moisture run down both sides of the rim. I'm going to work at about um, 3 o'clock here, and I'm going to have my hands connected as one tool. My left hand will be on the inside using my middle finger and my ring finger together as a tool. And then my right hand will be on the outside. Because of the nature of the bottom being a little higher than the wheel head, my hands will be staggered just a little bit. So on the outside, they're a bit lower, and on the inside, they're a bit higher. Now this is where I'm going to compress and pinch and create that divot. And then I'm going to slowly move upward, pinching the clay and pulling it up. Before I get to the very top, I'm going to release pressure and let go. As you're pulling, think about pulling up and towards the center, more of a diagonal than a straight up. Because of the way this is spinning, the clay always wants to spread out. So let's work to keep it in more of a cone shape by pulling up into the middle. I'm going to compress the rim again. So my left hand supports the inside and outside and my right hand with the sponge comes down right above and compresses. A little bit more water. I'm going to pull again. Slow the wheel down as you get thinner and taller. Relax and let go before you get to the top. Now I have some moisture sitting in the bottom here. I'm going to squeeze all the water out of my sponge. And I'm going to carefully sop that water up we don't want water sitting in the bottom of the cylinder. It'll make the clay really soft and then it's more likely to crack as it dries. So for my last pull, I wanna really make sure I get all this clay that's down at the bottom up into the wall of the pot. So I'm going to really apply a lot of pressure on the outside first. And then when my hand gets to about this position, that's when I'll apply pressure on the outside 
and pull upwards. So I'm going to create a lot of pressure at the bottom. Now I'm pinching with both hands, moving up, slowing the wheel down as I get higher, relaxing pressure as I get higher, relaxing even more, slowing down even more, relaxing completely and letting go. We'll get the water out of the bottom. The next step is to trim the bottom. I'm going to use this wooden knife. I'm going to get it wet and then holding it so this um, part of the blade is parallel with the wall of the pot. I'm going to hold it close to the bottom and just move straight down. Again, holding with both hands until it hits the wheel head. Stop the wheel and carefully remove that excess clay. This clay can be um, saved in a separate bag and or off to the side and wedged up. The next step is to create a nice straight cylinder, add some moisture. Um, on your handout it says ribbit. We're going to use this rib again on the exterior to create a nice straight up and down cylinder. One hand goes on the interior to support, so this part of my hand on the inside will be supporting and the rib on the outside will compress just like this. Compressing, supporting on the inside. Another way of shaping is called collaring, where you take both hands and create like a collar around the cylinder. And if you find your cylinder is getting a little too wide, you can collar it. And that takes um, very little pressure, but you'll do it a couple times. So very little pressure, collaring and moving upwards. And then repeat that process until it's not too wide anymore. very last step is to make sure you don't have any water on the inside. And then you have a cylinder. That's the basic part of almost everything we'll throw on the wheel. Once you've thrown your cylinder and it has had time to set out and dry just a little bit, you can remove it from the back. So you use your wire tool and you're going to hold it down against the wheel head and drag it across the bottom. You want to hold it nice and tight so it doesn't bend up and cut the bottom of your pot off. Now you can carefully pick that up with both hands. In another video we'll talk about how to clean up the bottom of the cylinder um, to allow it to dry if your rim is leather hard. You can set it upside down and let this part dry out some more. With our first cylinders though, what we're going to do is we're going to cut them in half so we can see how well we've thrown them. Take your wire tool cut down through the cylinder hold it tight, pull it back and forth and that will allow you to Cut the cylinder in half, and you can see how you've done. So I can see with my cylinder I left some clay at the bottom where it's a little bit thicker and thinner towards the top. And the bottom, the very bottom of it, is a good thickness. I think next time I throw I'm going to focus more on trying to get this clay up and into the wall here. It's maybe a little bit thin here. So I kind of want, I'm looking for an even thickness 
across the bottom and across the wall there.